So I received some comments asking me to make a keycard guide video. If you've ever played an SCP game, there's no doubt you would have come across keycards. Keycards are what allow progression through the SCP games, allowing progressive access to different parts of the game. In the case of Secret Laboratory, it takes the form of 12 different keycards, which offer different levels of access during your game. In this video, I'll be here to make understanding and applying this feature as easy as possible. I also want to say that I know people want me to make an entrance zone guide, and I will be addressing that at the end of this video. So I'm going to break this down into digestible parts. The first part will go through what the keycard access symbols mean and what they allow you to unlock. Then I will run through where all these keycards can actually spawn and finally I will show you how you can use SCP-914 to obtain different cards. The first symbols are the containment chamber access symbols. So there are three levels of containment chamber access in Secret Lab, which are essentially the locked SCP rooms. Level one containment access grants you access to SCP-914's chamber, where you can upgrade your gear, including your keycard. More on that a little later. Containment access two is what allows access to SCP-012's and SCP-096's containment chambers. Both contain gear, which again I'll elaborate on later. Finally, containment access level three is what gives you access to the chambers of SCP-106 and SCP-079 for containment purposes. Now, if you're unsure of what you can use these rooms for, you can also check out my light containment guides in the video here. The next access type is armory access now like the containment access it is given in three levels level one armory access grants you the access to the light containment zone armory and the ammunition room in heavy containment armory access level two grants you access to the scp-049 armory and the alpha warhead armory and the generators Finally, Armory Access Level 3 grants you access to the Micro HID room in the Heavy Containment Zone. Want to know more about these rooms? You can also check out my Heavy Containment Guide Zone video here. Moving on from here, you have your Checkpoint Access. Now, Checkpoint Access is what allows you to move between gates, between zones. So this includes Checkpoints A and B in the Light Containment Zone, and the Checkpoint between the Heavy Containment Zone and the Entrance Zone. This combined with Containment Access Level 1 is what allows you to open the bulletproof lockers containing the new SCPs in the Mega Patch 2 update. Intercom Access is exactly what you'd expect. It gives you access to the intercom room in the Entrance Zone, allowing you to broadcast a message across the entire facility. Exit Access is what gives you access to gates A and B in the Entrance Zone, which is required if you are to escape. Finally, Nuke Access is what allows you not only just to open the Alpha Warhead remote panel on the surface, but also to unlock the button inside. Keycards can also spawn in various locations throughout the facility. In Light Containment Zone, there are four possible locations for keycards to spawn. In the water closet labelled WC00, you can find a janitor or scientist keycard in either the men's sink or the men's floor. There is a possibility that you can also find a keycard in the women's sink or the women's toilets. And then you have the SCP-012's containment chamber, which has a guaranteed zone manager card inside on the table but it requires a containment level 2 card to access, such as a scientist card. In the PC-15 room, you will also have a guaranteed scientist card spawn, but you need to find the table that it spawns on. Finally, you can also find low-level cards in lockers. Now, lockers can be found in the SCP-372 containment chamber, GR-18, SCP-173's containment chamber, PT-00, the PC-15 room mentioned a second ago, and the VT-00 room, also known as the greenhouse. In the heavy containment zone, you can find a keycard in three additional locations. The first being the server room, in which they change the spawn of a senior guard card to a scientist card. It has a guaranteed spawn, but alternates between the top and bottom floor of the server room. Then you can always find a guard card on the middle bookshelf in the alpha warhead room. Now, it's a pretty useless card if you get to that stage, but what I like to do is grab it anyways, open the armory and drop it inside, lock the door behind you. Finally, in the heavy containment zone, you can find a guaranteed loot Tenant keycard in the SCP-096's containment chamber, however this requires a containment access level 2 card. Finally, in the entrance zone there are the least amount of keycard spawns. You can only obtain a card from the lockers or the room with multiple tables, but it'll be a low level card assuming it even spawns in the first place. Now, in a previous version of the game you used to be able to find a facility manager card in the entrance zone, to which 
guards would grab this card, activate the nuke, and the game would be over in five minutes, so this was removed. Comment below if that's ever happened to you. I've tried to respond to all my comments. With that segment out of the way, I want to touch on SCP-914 and how it can be used to upgrade key cards. Generally, if you cannot remember specific patterns, the safest bet is to keep putting it on fine. Although this does take longer, you will always end up with an 05 key card. Here is a chart for the other processes. Now, if you wish to save one or two steps depending on the card, your best bet is to use the one-to-one -one setting. The cards that you should always use one-to-one -one first on are the scientist card, the janitor card, both turn into a zone manager card, the guard card, which turns into a major scientist card, and the cadet card, which turns into a containment engineer card. From there, you should always use fine, and if your card is not one of these, use fine. You can also put an adrenaline in on very fine for a slim chance for it to turn into a janitor key card. Other than that, cards spawn on their respective classes. So scientists spawn with scientist cards, commanders spawn with commander cards, and chaos insurgency spawn with chaos insurgency devices, etc. All cards and their respective access are on screen now, but trust me, it's a lot more beneficial to learn the individual access types and look at the cards you currently have and apply that knowledge. So this concludes my keycard guide video. I did want to say thank you for 250 subscribers, which 60, 70 of those have been since my last guide video. I swear this is the last time I bring it up, but I've received so much more support than I ever thought I would on those videos, so thank you so much for that. Which brings me to my next point. A lot of you have requested I make an entrance zone guide video. My computer, my main PC uh, is currently in storage uh, as I'm making this video off my laptop as I'm going to university in September. So if this video gets 75 likes, I will get my PC out of storage and will make an entrance zone video for you guys. If you're looking to find out more about Secret Lab or want a good laugh, be sure to check out some of my other videos. If you have questions or feedback, do let me know in the comments as I'm always on top of my comments section and respond to 99% of them. With that out of the way, that's the end of the video. I hope everyone stays safe and uh, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.